Hey, what's up everybody? Scotty Hoare here. I'm just going to share another thought with you from the practice room. I'm here in my basement in Wilmington, Delaware, hard at work on the marimba and the drums, getting ready for all my concerts and working on some new creative work, some new compositions and all that. Uh, and as usual, revising all my teaching techniques and pedagogical ideas and wanted to share an interesting point with you. Um, over the past three years, I've learned a lot about physiology and neurology in particular. And I'm kind of synthesizing that with my existing knowledge that many of you know of uh, regarding holistic awareness and teaching techniques and practicing techniques and especially as applied to percussion. And with some of this new knowledge, I'm making some interesting discoveries. Uh, and I want to share with you a, a insight that has to do with practicing a certain section in one of my original compositions for the drums, well, let's take a look at the drums quick. I always love looking at that setup. Beautiful setup. Uh, nice uh, Saturn V, custom made for me by Mapex. Uh, but anyways, uh, this section is a really challenging section to play physically uh, in one of my compositions where I'm playing drum set, usually with a playback track, and when I'm lucky enough, with a band. But usually it's with a playback track. Uh, and I wrote the songs called Balancing the Impossible, and I'll play a clip from that in a minute. Uh, it's one of my favorite original compositions to play at my solo concerts, my clinics. And this is a bit of a secret, but I actually wrote a good part of that middle section as kind of a way to push myself and challenge myself, because I know that I'd always have to be in good physical shape to play it. So I kind of like created this marker for myself that if I wanted to play this piece, I created like a checkmate for myself in that I would have to stay in good shape. Um, and the result is a really powerful performance that I'm really proud of. So this middle section is really hard to play. Uh, a lot of upper body, lower body, you know, even cardio, uh, really fast changes, odd time signatures, double bass, all of that. Uh, and when I practice it, obviously I practice it slowly uh, because, again, these are things I've talked about before in prior videos, prior lectures, all my clinics. Um, and if you're in the percussion community, you already know this, that when you learn a challenging part or even a new technique or a skill, especially when you're talking about muscle activation and motor skills, uh, you need to do it slowly. Uh, repetitively, regularly, in order to get more proficient at the skill. Uh, when you do it slowly, you should exercise focus concentration on the precision and the consistency of the motion. Whether it's a large motion, like sometimes moving around the drum set, or a small motion, like um, playing a passage on the xylophone, or playing something on classical guitar, for example. Uh, and by the way, when you uh, when you work with wind instruments, there's other things to consider like breathing, and, and I'm not a pedagogue in any wind instrument, so I can't speak to that, but namely instruments that involve muscle activation, muscular endurance, and motor skills being fine motor skills and gross motor skills. So namely that would be percussion instruments, especially things like drum set, in my case drum set, marimba, snare drum, or timpani. A multiple percussion, congas, Latin percussion, but also things like guitar and piano uh, that involve concise muscle activation. Um, so point number one is that when you do come in contact with a new technique or skill, whether you're a beginner or advanced player, you need to do it slowly, repetitively, with focused concentration on the clarity, consistency, um, and uh, mechanical efficiency of the motion ideally with the guidance of a good quality instructor that can give you a direct feedback, which a YouTube instructional video cannot. Um, most online formats cannot. Some, some have forums where you can get feedback and things, but you really need to work with an instructor on that and then just do repetitions of the physical motion. Uh, so these are all kind of basics that I covered in my doctoral thesis 10 years ago and are pretty well known to the music instruction community, especially percussion, guitar, piano. Um, 
et cetera, et cetera, harp, um, keyboard instruments, things like that. But with this section, first of all, let's, <laughs> let's check out the section that I'm talking about uh, in this video clip. This is from my original composition, Balancing the Impossible. I'm playing drums. You can watch the full performance, of course, on my tributary page under Snapshots of a Journey Season 3. Uh, so let's just take a look at this middle section in the performance, and then I'll talk about it in a moment. section to play very fast like I said before uh, very full body have to be in good shape to play it if I've been playing marimba or orchestral percussion or teaching for a number of weeks and I just try to sit down on the drums and play that it doesn't typically doesn't work uh, unless maybe I'm doing a run prior or I'm you know staying active physically otherwise sometimes I can do it but the point is uh, it's a really challenging section and I discovered something interesting uh, with physical exercise, I've begun to understand just through the research and the reading the difference between aerobic exercise and anaerobic exercise. And I want to clarify this for everybody because it has to do with uh, holistic awareness and music, one of my favorite topics. When you do aerobic exercise, the, the main thing people talk about is that it's good for longevity and cardiovascular health. So if you do jogging, mo slow or moderate pace jogging, you know, usually after the 30 minute mark, uh, you get a nice benefit to cardio cardiovascular health and longevity. And also probably you get, you know, good oxygen delivery, uh, good respiratory, you know, uh, in and out, uh, carbon dioxide and oxygen in and out. Uh, but you don't quite get the same benefit that you do when you do anaerobic exercise or what's referred to now as HIT or high intensity interval training, um, which are very intense fast bursts of exercise with uh, intermittent rests, rests being very short. So 20 seconds, very intense, 10 seconds rest, for example, or some people do wider intervals. Uh, 30 seconds, very intense, 20 seconds rest, whatever. There's various things. But a lot of the research shows 20 seconds, very intense, and 10 seconds, maybe some deep breathing, just for 10 seconds, and then boom, right back into the next interval. So this actually impacts you very differently. Uh, and it has an activating effect to the nervous system that the aerobic exercise can't. The aerobic exercise, like I said, does have those good benefits, um, namely longevity, cardiovascular health, and then after that 30-minute mark, maybe a little bit of endorphin, which can boost your mood and energy and make you feel more centered and relaxed and likely allow you to access executive function in your brain more. Uh, now, when you're doing this HIT, uh, it stimulate, stimulates especially the catecholamines, which I've talked about in a prior video, dopamine, serotonin, excuse me, dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine in your brain and your nervous system, electrochemically, which has an activating effect. Um, and also, uh, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is a molecule that helps regenerate neurons and things. So 
the first point I want to make here is that those are two really different types of exercise. And when I do this um, section that I just showed you, first of all, I practice it slowly, but I do it in such a way where it's very similar to a HIIT workout. And I never knew this stuff 10 years ago, or even five years ago, or most certainly not when I was 17. All I just did was play, 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 play. Uh, so I'll do this section, and I'll do it slowly, very intense, and then I'll do 10 seconds of some deep breathing, and then another rep. And I'll do that for about 10 to 15 minutes. So it just dawned on me recently that this is pretty much a HIIT workout. This is a high intensity interval training workout, and it stimulates the nervous system in a very special way if I'm doing it correctly. Now, if I just tried to go without any break, you know, I'd probably tire myself out and I probably wouldn't be able to play as well near the end. It, I'd just be really soggy. Um, furthermore, if I rested for too long in between those reps, I wouldn't quite get the same workout. Um, and let me be clear too about what results are we after? Well, there's two things, and I talk about these a lot when I talk about holistic awareness. We're gonna improve our musical skills, so ideally I'm gonna improve my proficiency to play this section if I'm following some of these protocols. And number two, I'm actually gonna get a great exercise benefit for my holistic health if I do all of this correctly. And those two things are bi-directional, right? I talk about this a lot in my holistic awareness clinic. Uh, Music, developing musical skills and your holistic health, one can help the other. They can both help each other. Okay, so there's a reciprocal, bi-directional relationship there. So there you go. There's a specific example of how I'm applying a concept in exercise physiology to practicing a really hard section in my concert that I just can't play unless I use my very best effort. So there you go. I hope that was helpful and insightful. Of course, always visit scottyhorry.com. Also visit all of my content on Tributary and stay up to date on um, my Facebook page and the calendar of events I have at the front page of my website. So that's all for now. Thanks for checking out this video. We'll see you later.